Hey guys, I just wanted to show you guys this. So I got uh, a notification this morning. One of my friends had um, tagged me in this saying, can you please help? You're really good at finding people. Um, so I thought I'd just share with you guys. So this lady here, Kate Elliott, why can't I click on it without it going to that? It's not going to let me. Okay, so um, either way, she's found this key, um, which is huge, um, and engraved on it, it says, presented to Loretto Dine on 21st birthday, 6th of January, 1937, um, and she would like to return it to the original family. So I thought I'd help out, um, and I've just jumped on, and I've just created a little tree with all the information I've found so far. So I thought I'd just share it with you guys because I wanted to do some actual work today. Um, but I've got a little bit sidetracked. So this is Loretto Dynan, uh, Loretto Elizabeth Dynan. She was born in 1916 um, and died in June 1943. So she was 26, I believe, if my calculations are right. Um, so not long after her 21st birthday, um, she actually passed. So I haven't got any children for her as of yet, but I found some brothers and sisters, uh, which I did through birth, deaths and marriages. Um, I don't have the screen up anymore. Um, but I just thought I'd share with you guys and I'll just talk you guys through it as I'm going. Um, so I'm using uh, Ancestry.com, um, which I have a full worldwide subscription to, um, and Trove and Find a Grave and Birthless Marriages. So I'm just using a few little things um, that I like to use to get going. So comment if you are watching. Um, I can't see the comments, otherwise you're going to see this. Um, but comment if you're watching. Um, otherwise, um, hashtag replay. Um, and if you've got any questions or um, anything, let me know and I can answer them. Um, but, yeah, so I just thought I'd share. So at the moment I'm just trying to find some um, children for her brothers and sisters. So I was just focusing on Irene Bridget, who married William Charles Patterson. Um, and I found them living in the Ascot Vale area. Um, and so that's where I'm at the moment. So I'll just keep doing what I'm doing and share with you guys as I go. Um, so I'm using the Australian electoral rolls, um, which is up to 1980. So we can actually find where they were living in 1980. But I am working my way from the start to where uh, to now, essentially. Um, so we've got 30, 30, 28. So 1928. Okay, so already I can see here that's 58 Chapman Street, so it's the right person. So that's where she was living in the last few and where her mother and father lived as well. Unfortunately, their mother passed away um, when they were also a little, quite young. Um, so I'm guessing there would have been some family. Where am I looking? Okay, so this is Dinah, so it's still coming up with her maiden name. So uh, 58 Chapman Street clerk. So I'm just saving it to that person. All the information is correct. Save to tree. And I'll just go again. So the electoral rolls um, give us so much information as to where a person was at the time. My internet's decided to be slow now. Um, to yeah, so where a person was at a specific time, so it actually gives us an address. Um, not always an address, but it might just give us the um, street name, or it might just even just give you a suburb. Um, but also can show you who else was living in the home at the time, um, which is what I am trying to utilise at the moment. So over here, we've got Irene Bridget One Six Two A, the Parade Home Duties, which is where her and her husband Walter Charles lived, um, and he was a public servant. So I'm just double checking and making sure that there's no extra people living with that surname at that address as well. Um, because if there was, that would indicate to me that they've had a child that's um, come of age and is able to vote now. Um, so we're still in 1931. They only got married in 1930 from memory. Um, so still probably a little bit young. Well, I'll say young for having children, but young into their marriage to be having an adult child. Oh, I've accidentally added an extra husband here. So I'll just go over it and view my tree. And I'm just going to delete this one because it doesn't have his middle name. 
I haven't actually looked into him as of yet. Um, so she had an older sister, Ellen Dynan, who married Shields. Um, I couldn't find any children for them, but actually couldn't even find a census for them living together. So um, I will go back to that, but I just wanted to try and find as much info as quickly as possible for this person so that um, we can get on to where have I done? I'm just popping on the wrong screen so we can get back to um, the family. Hopefully we can find it. So um, I believe from looking at her Facebook, she's in the Glenburn area, uh, which is here. Um, Heidelberg, I believe, is around here, around the Thomastown area, uh, which is where Loretto passed. Um, she's buried in the Melbourne Cemetery, which there's Melbourne down the bottom if you're not familiar with it. Um, but um, we're finding a lot of North Melbourne um, at the moment. But we've got to remember that North Melbourne um, now is just a tiny little suburb, but um, back in the day it was quite a large area. So it was before we had, um, well, it would have been when we were just getting the towns around the, the 30s. Still quite... Um, wrong button. Not that long ago, but um, things were still changing. Okay, so um, Ascot Vale is where they were living. Um, okay, so we can see here, if I just jump ahead, 1980, they're living in Blackburn. I might just have a look anyway. So this is the electoral rolls. Uh, P A T E R. Irene Bridget. Now I need to change because I think on my tree, I've got um, her husband as a double T, um, but on the electoral rolls there's only one T. So I'm just going to go and double check that as well. Um, so seven at Charles Street, not a wadding, and there's no husband listed there. So I'm not going to add that to my tree yet because I don't want to. Uh, put any incorrect information in so it might not be that specific person. Okay, so 1934. Hey, Em, I can see that you're watching. Say hello. All right, so 162A, the parade again. So I'm just going to go and view it. So there she is, home duty still. Husband, Walter Charles, 162A. Um, and no children as of yet. Again, we're only four years into the marriage, though. Yes, yeah, so you can see here I've put a double T. So I'm just going to go and correct that. So as I do searches um, like this, I do like to do a little bit of research around the area um, as well, just find out a little bit more information. That might give me a hint or a tip as to something else that it might seem insignificant, um, but sometimes there's just that little hint that might go, hmm, and then we do that little bit more research and we can find more. So 1937, seven years into the marriage, and we're in Ascot Vale still. Okay, a little bit. Says Irene Bridget, 162A, the parade in Home Duties. And Walter Charles, 162A, the parade, public servant. Now, I could go and have a look into these other Pattersons here. Um, we can see here there's a Lolita and a Vera. Um, Vera would be the mother, being home duties. Uh, Lolita, drink dispenser. Um, and I would say maybe that this um, Bruce Wallace up here, 14 Felston Street, might be a typo. Um, we could look into that as well. 
there's a William Robert here at 22 Bank Street. Um, so we could look into them further and see um, if they are any relation. Um, that might give us, again, some more hints or tips into finding what we're looking for. So I'm finding a lot of the family were public servants, um, telephonists, that type of thing. So um, I found a couple of um, public servant roles, which gave, us, gave me full birth dates, um, which matched up with the years, uh, matched up with the area they were living in as well. So, all right. So where did you go after Ascot Vale? So that was, uh, we were still in the 30s, weren't we? So, about 40, not 49. Now, Deep Dean, I know that her father died in the Q area, so um, we can have a look in here and see if this might be her. Also, a lot of the time when there was a death in the family, people would kind of move to be closer to the other family. Um, okay, so now we've got double T's here. Um, Irene Bridget, where are you? P A T. Oh, oh, okay. I'm just looking in the wrong section. P A T. Here we go. All right, four Austin Street home duties. Ah, and look, there's Walter Charles for Austin Street public servant still. So that matches up. So I can say that that is the same person because their occupation and first and middle name still matches up. Um, rare occasion that might just be a bit of a fluke um, or, you know, just a coincidence that someone else has got the same name and does the same job. Um, but being that they're in, in the same town and um, her, her parents were in that queue area as well um, would say to me that this is the correct person. So, again, I'm still not finding anyone living with them. So 1949, so they would have... If they had a child straight away after their marriage, which was usually the case, um, they would have a 19-year-old by now. Um, so I'm wondering if maybe the child married young um, and had already moved out of the home before becoming a voting age, which does happen. So what I can do actually is I'm just going to put in Irene Bridget. So I'm just using Trove here, Irene Bridget Patterson. See if I can find a death notice or an obituary or something with her name that would give me an indication of any children she might have. Hmm. Nothing there. So what if we try William Charles? A bit true for Mrs. W. Patterson. In a completely different area though. Oh, this is quite young too. I'm looking at the wrong gear. What's the matter, baby? I'm sure that's not what he said. He said I'm not allowed to eat anything until dinner because I wasted two bowls of cereal. You wasted two bowls of cereal? My goodness. No, no, Why would you do that? I'm not hungry. Mm. This is a lot of good stuff. Okay, so Charles. You just do that. Okay, so 1931, 34, 36, 37. Yeah, yeah. After 1937. Mm, animation. Yes. Animation. Animation. Machine. Mason. Mason. 
63 in Mitcham. So this it keeps bringing me back to um, Josh and Elsie. I'm doing a live so people can hear everything that's going on. But they can hear you right now. Yeah, and they can hear you guys fighting. No? No, I bet you they can. So 54 in Q. I'm just going to go have a look at this 63 in Mitcham. Because the next lot for the same name coming to this area. So it's uh, the Mitcham, Blackburn, Box Hill, that kind of area. Uh, Deep Dean even, um, a lot of people that live out in the Arrow Valley area would have ancestors from that area. It's kind of like a bit of a migration from the city and the further out That's you. as the years That's go. You. I'm sure in another 100 years we'll be even further out. So Irene Bridget's at 7 Charles Street, another Wadding here. And look, Walter Charles again, 7 Charles Street, Nutter Wadding. So we can confirm again that we've got the right couple here. Still no no children that um at the same address. Oh, we had the fire going last night because it was quite cold. Um, really hot. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. So you can see here, so it's a little bit of a pattern, Ascot Vale, Ascot Vale, Ascot Vale. Sister passed away. Three years later, her other sister passes away, uh, which is Loretto. This is the one that we're concentrating on, trying to find the key, trying to find a descendant to give this key to. Um, and the death of father um, in the queue area. And then four years later, they're living in the queue area. So you can see, like I said, um, most probably moved due to the death in the family. And then 63, we get off to Mitcham. So we'll keep having a look. So it's 54 in Q. So even though we can see that that um, pattern's coming, I'm always double checking making sure that we are not adding anything that's incorrect. And that's not to say that we won't add something that's incorrect um, because it does happen. Uh, where are we? Irene Bridger at 4 Austin, Walter Charles at 4 Austin. No other children as of yet. So save, I'm just gonna back, jump back over to Trove. William, yes, I'm person. What if I put in Patterson Ascot Vale? Apologise, I haven't got my phone's going off its head. <clears throat> Patterson wedding in 45. So if they had a child in 1930, the same year they got married, that child would be 15. Probably a little bit young, but we'll have a look. And when I say a little bit young, I mean as in for this era um, in the 1945, 15 was probably getting to that stage of um, society gasping the age of a 15-year-old getting married. The marriage of Dorothy and Bobby, youngest daughter of Mrs. England and Parade Ascot Vale. Um, no, okay. So what it's done, as you can see, I've searched Patterson and Ascot Vale. It's searched Patterson and then Ascot Vale, but they're not together. Um, so it just brings up results of those words close by. Say hello if you're there. I'm just doing a search. We've got a, um, a key. This is the key here um, that's been found in the Glenburn area um, and it's inscripted with Loretto Dinant on 21st birthday in 1937. So I'm just doing some research to see if we can find any descendants. I thought I'd share, so say hello if you're there. 
and hashtag replay if you're watching the replay later on. Okay, so what do we know about Hotham? I'm not really familiar with the Hotham area, to be honest. Um, Mount Hotham. Thank you, Jessie. Mm, or wiki doesn't really give me much today. All right, let's keep going with our search. Sorry, I do jump back and forth quite a bit. So if I am going, okay, so I'm going to have a look at North Melbourne here because it mentions Hotham in here. Um, and we know that the family was North Melbourne. Uh, formal, there we go. So it's formerly known as Hotham, an essentially working class area of middle class pockets and was one of the first towns in Victoria to be granted municipal status. There you go. Okay. So, um, yeah, so North Melbourne, West Melbourne, the areas um, that they had births for, so her parents, um, and then the name changed to Hotham. So um, I assumed that maybe the family had moved, um, but that's incorrect. The name just changed. All right, so the next one is 1968 in Blackburn. Walter Charles. What was the, what was the last dress for Austin, I believe it was? Patterson. Seven, oh, Seven Charles Street. And William Charles is there at Seven Charles Street also. And still no other Pattersons living with them. Okay. Um, I'm just thinking if I put in up here, change this to Blackburn. If you know any Pattersons that live in the Blackburn area, please do let me know. Thirty-six. So, what we used did we get to Blackburn? Sorry, let me just pop back. It's about the four, late forties, wasn't it? What's well, William Patterson, one of the founders of the bank? All right, let's have a look at this. Nineteen thirty-seven. So in 1937, they were still in Ascot Vale, so it might not be what we're looking for. Let's have a look. Um, so I'd like to cross with the CW. Warlow of Warrigal, last Saturday, the age was very interested in your splendid article of the Bank of England, the age 5th of June. In answer to this question, whether any of your readers could tell him if William Patterson, one of the founders of the bank, made the now historical statement attributed to him, the bank enough benefit of the interest on all modes, which creates out of nothing. I would like to say that I have seen the statement quoted more than once somewhere. Then again, I think it was the London Chamber of Commerce in the article quoted in the London Times, which made, oh, there you go. Um, that really doesn't tell us much um, other than the fact that there was a William Bat Patterson uh, who was a founder of the bank. Um, our William Patterson was a public servant, um, so that could be him, um, but I have no, from that article, no solid yes it is or no it's not. Um, so, so the further we go down, the less likely it's going to be a match for what we're looking for. Hang on. Mr. and Mrs. Patterson family, Blackburn. Oh, 1853. No, that's not right. Okay, so we could make this and we could go 1940 to 1980 and see if that brings us any more solid answers. Yep, let's just want to click this. 
sometimes it helps to add um, the name. Hang on. Let's have a look at this, 1946. Patterson and Neelak on July 31st, Myra, beloved wife of William Patterson, South Melbourne. Okay. No. Um, I could pop in here, Irene Patterson. Nothing solid just jumping out at me. Um, so I'm just going to continue what I was doing. Um, so we got to 49, 54, 63, 68, still in the Blackburn area. And let's keep going. So 68 after 68 comes. 72 from memory. My slow internet. Oh, there we go. Yep, so 72, still in the Blackburn area. They run in alphabetical order, which is very helpful. Okay, Irene Bridget, 7 Charles Street, Nutter Wadding still. Oh, but William's up there. Okay, so that gives us an idea, an indication of maybe his death. Um, so what I'm going to do... So this is 1972, so I'm just going to save that to her. And I'm just going to have a quick double check. So between 68 and 72, her husband disappears. So we're just going to go over him. And I'm just going to edit him. And I'm going to put... Between 1968 and 1972. Um, death place, Blackburn, Victoria. Now that might not be exact, um, but it's going to trigger Ancestry to. Let's just leave between out or that better. There's more than one year possible. Are you sure? Yes, I want to use it. Okay, so we've still got we've got twelve hints here. So we've got a marriage and a death, or kind of a death for him. So when we go and have a look at him, all right, well this matches up. Walter Charles Patterson, death of the second of September, nineteen seventy, in Nutterwadding. Walter Charles Patterson, 1970. Walter Charles Patterson. So these um, New York, UK ones, we can pretty much dismiss um, at this stage, but I won't because it is possible because we have actually haven't looked into his childhood. Um, I haven't looked into that. So... Um, So I'm going to quick compare. No, okay, there's nothing there. Sometimes I'll have something like a wife's surname or wife's name just to kind of back it up. Nothing. I'm just going to double check and see if we can find uh, William Charles Patterson in 1970. Click. Ah, oh, no, it's too late. Okay. So Trove doesn't, um, it stops at a certain year. 
so you can hop down here. Okay, so it stops at 1959 is the last one. So let's go find a grave and see if I can find William Charles Patterson. Born, don't know, year 1970. Search cemetery location, let's just say Melbourne, Victoria. Let's see, yeah, that's the one. Oh, it might not be in Melbourne City. Invalid location, is it really? Melbourne, Melbourne City is invalid. Oh, nope, it's working. So find a grave um, is a worldwide um, search. Oh, 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 I'm pushing too many buttons too quickly. All right, so finish loading. All right, go back. All right, so on here, it just gave 1970. Hang on, what did the probate say? 2nd of September, 1970. Um, this one. Refine search, cemetery location, Victoria search. All right, all right, get rid of Charles. Mommy. Yeah, baby. Got a blood finger. You got a blood finger? How did you do that? Where? Where? Just a little bit of skin missing, darling. Oh, no, but there was blood. Was there? Yeah. Oh. And I put it, some water on it. Yeah. When it dropped some drops of water. And now I'm letting the thing soak out. Good job. You made it all go away. With some of the blood. Yeah. Not all of the blood now. Does she made them for me? Mm. Um, how did I manage to open up newspapers? Handy though. So let's have a look. Um, uh, nineteen thirty. They got married to nineteen seventy. Look after the newspapers so I can do it now. Uh, All right, so this is, I don't know how I managed to open up newspapers. Um, I must have clicked on, I uh, must have clicked down here somewhere. Um, but newspapers.com um, is really great, actually. Um, it's... It's getting better and better. Um, it's, I think it's only fairly new. Um, so the age, actually, um, I can get articles from the 90s. Um, I found a few uh, interesting things on different family members. Um, okay, so this might be the banker that they were referring to. Charter of the Association of the Bank of England, 1694. Originating a loan English government, the bank's largely creation of William Patterson, a Scottish merchant. Okay. Um, this is all just going to be about banking stuff, isn't it? So let's just go back. I might change William to Irene Patterson. <clears throat> And the H, please. It's quite a few search results there. Um, okay, go back. Okay. Uh, 1950, 1952. Uh, that's a miss. Let's have a look at 1950. So if you had any children, they'd be 20 or under. 
tip of a murder case. Interesting. Uh, I remember Verna Irene Patterson. So Irene here in this instance is the middle name of somebody um, and not the Irene we are looking for. But you can see how um, it, how easy it is to get sidetracked um, just from, see so that's Verna again, I can see that now, um, 43, New South Wales, 59, what's this one? Let's just zoom in a bit. Again, middle name, Violet Irene Patterson. Put in an area. I'm just thinking if we put in Blackburn, see if anything comes up then. Irene Blackburn Road, Irene Sutton, Irene James Patterson. Oh, we've got one child crying. Nothing is jumping out there. All right, so let's just add it for now and see if it gives us any hints. Oh, public servant, there you go. I should have clicked on it earlier. So that gives us more of an indication that that's the right one. So I'm just going to assume for now that that is him. I'm going to change his death date to that. And Nada Wadding, Victoria, Australia. Birth, death, birth, cemetery record. Ah, uh, here we go. In loving memory of Elizabeth, beloved wife of death. Oh, this is the original one. Okay, so when I first, this is the first um, hint we got, and I actually got this from the Facebook group. Um, someone else had shared it. Oh, I've got comments. Haley, uh, should just up Irene Patterson. Daughter. Irene Patterson is her married name. She is the sister of Loretta. Loretto. Um, and it was in uh, 1930. Wouldn't these be her children? Yes, it appears that this, by this, that Loretta Elizabeth Dynan is the daughter of Elizabeth Dynan and that she did have a sister, Irene. Yes, correct. These are Loretto's siblings. Okay. Um, so I was coming back to, okay, so I was just coming back to show you that that was the original, um, oh, I can't find it now. Um, so someone had shared this and, uh, in loving memory of Elizabeth, beloved wife of Daniel Dynan, died 10th of March, 1925, age 49 years. And her beloved husband, Daniel died on the 27th of April, 45, age 69. Also their loved daughter, Loretto, um, Died 24th of June 1943, aged 27 years. Slab Walter Charles Patterson, 
um, loved husband of Renee. Okay. Rainy, it should be, sorry, not Renee. Just thinking that, I'm like, Irene, Renee, Irene, Rainy. Makes more sense. So we've got here, there's another death indication of him. Um, and it says there that the father is Charles and mother's maiden name Cleary, death date 1970. So that gives us his um, parents as well. Not that we need that for this search, but adding it might give us a little bit of more information. Even though we think it's insignificant, if we do find it, add it anyway, because um, it will help. So let's just go back to our tree. So I still haven't found any children. And I can't find a death notice. Uh, William Charles Patterson. I'm going to change Blackburn to Nana Wadding. Oh, no, I couldn't do it in here, could I? Because it was 1970. Mm, that's frustrating. Oh, don't click on it. All right, so, well, William James Dynan. I haven't looked into him yet, so let's go and have a look at him. So, as you can see, I get, um, this is not the right one. William Fred Dynan James Brunet. Ignore. Um, I get, uh, bored. <laughs> if I don't start finding, uh, if I start coming up empty-handed quite a bit, um, I will jump onto the next person and then I will go back to that person eventually. But keep looking. I'll keep looking. All right. So Daniel and Elizabeth matches up. So this is the birth. So, yeah, there's eight other public trees um, for William James Dynan. Um, so that could help us very soon. Um, Billy Frederick, ignore. 83, Glen. Ooh, I wonder if this is Glenburn. That would be interesting. Let's just have a look. 83, Glen. Hmm, okay. Death Bentley. All right, let's go up and have a look. Let's review this marriage to Mary Therese. Mary Therese Hogan. Mary Therese. William James Diamond. Hang on. Let me just check something here. Open in a new tab. I believe one of the husbands, this guy, may have remarried after Ellen passed away to Mary Teresa. Hmm. Okay. I wonder if this is... I wonder if this is him, her. Sorry. All right. Let's um. Let's just hop out of there for a second. And I'm going to go have a look at these eight family trees and see what other people have got on their trees. So um, when we're looking at other people's family trees, I don't like to copy what they've got. Um, unless we do some research or um, it gives us some hard evidence. Okay, so this Sarah uh, Cooper 2 family tree, owner Sarah Black, um, has 14 sources. So usually the one with the most sources will be the one up the top. <coughs> so sources are the evidence, so the documents. Um, so she says that Daniel and Elizabeth are the parents, which is what I've got, born in 1903 in Hotham. Um, she says that, yep, he's the one that married Mary Therese Hogan. 
um, and they had a child named Eleanor Mavis Selden Reed. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, sorry, spouse. So married a, married uh, another person of that name. All right, let's just scroll and see what other people have got. Sometimes you'll find um, the ones that have next to no sources um, are usually closer to the person. Um, and they're not actually interested in finding out much. Um, so they just have like a small tree. They might have just put themselves and their parents and grandparents in and then forgot about ancestry and moved on. So besides the fact that the majority of these have agreed that, yes, Mary Therese Hogan is the one that married William Dynan, it doesn't really give us any hard facts. We've got a death date here of 83 Bentley, but then this one says 83 Glen, 83 Bentley. Okay, so I'm just going to use that as a as a guide. Uh, we've got William James Bentley here. Let's go and have a look. Bentley being part of the Hotham area. Hey, hello, if you're there. I'm just on a bit of a mystery solving exhibition, <laughs> um, trying to find um, any descendants or any relatives of Loretto Dynan, who, um, okay, so William James Dynan here, 221 Vickery Street, Bentley, married Eleanor Mavis, which is one of the names someone said they married. I'm not going to add that yet. Um, so a giant key um, inscribed with Loretto Dynan's name was found in the Glenburn area. Um, I have posted a link to the post um, in this post <laughs> um, and that's the key there. Um, so I'm just trying to find any, they want to re return it to the original um, family. So I thought I'd help out and see what I could find. So I've found quite a bit so far. Um, this is the tree I've created so far. So here's Loretto here. These are her brothers and sisters and her mum and dad. Um, haven't got them in the actual Glenburn area, but um, Loretto died in Heidelberg. Um, 1940, Irene, we don't actually know yet. 83 in, now, um, I'm not sure, sorry. William was the one that we were just looking at, which um, there's a Glen but there's also a Bentley. So trying to work it all out at the moment. Just thought I'd share and show you guys how I um how I look into these people. So that's so William Frederick Dynan with the Jays Dynan, but our guys our father is Daniel. So we know that that's incorrect. So if we say William Frederick, we know that's incorrect. Um, and we also already have William James as our name. So here's the death index. It's 1983, Glenn. Daniel and Elizabeth. So there you go. It's got his parents there. So I'm going to add that. All right. Um, Daniel, so here's his birth. So again, confirming um, 1903, which is what we already have. Daniel Dynan being his father and mother's maiden name, uh, Roche, Roche. I don't know how you would say that. Looks French to me. Roche, maybe. <laughs> Guys, just remember I'm on a live. Sorry, my kids are playing. Um, I don't think we're allowed to do it in here. A game with their pop. Uh, oh, look, William James Dynan in North Melbourne, 1926. Let's go have a look at this. Public servant again. Oh, here we go. And 58 Chapman Street, that should say, I bet. So let's have a look. And double check. The 58 Chapman Street is where the family all lived together. Um, a couple of them stayed living there after their mother had passed and the other family moved on. So down here we've got Daniel, their father, 58 Chapman Street, uh, Ellen Catherine, 58 Chapman, William James, 58 
Chapman, um, so everything matches up. So what I could do if I was really invested, if I wasn't um, just doing this for free for some random, I don't know, um, I could actually go and buy this marriage certificate and that would give me some further information as to who the parents of William and Mary are, uh, which would help us with our search. Uh, would help us confirm. Um, 1968 in Bentley. So if we have a look at this electoral roll, so he died in 83, um, but they did say that the Bentley on a couple of the family trees. So let's just confirm. I'm just wondering um, suburbs that start with the Glen name. Where am I going? GY, uh, that might be near Bentley somewhere. Um, I don't know where Glen Huntley is, but maybe. Um, okay, so this is back referring to William James Dunn and Vicky Sh Vickery Street um, that married Eleanor Mavis. Um, so we haven't confirmed whether this is Ill or isn't him yet, so I'm just going to leave that. The death again. Daniel and Rochelle, so that matches up. 1983. So. <laughs> it's a CD you used to listen to when you were a little baby. Okay, so this William James Darnham was uh, an accountant, Bentley, 83. So look, the name matches up, the year matches up, public servant, accountant matches up. Um, it's just this Bentley that is Bentley. So going back to trusted Google because Google helps us with everything. So towns in the yeah, so Glen Huntley's right next to it. There you go, I was right. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna no, is that the right one? This one, I'm gonna add this probate um as him. So changing the death date. Um, I'm going to change Glenn to Huntley. Uh. Mm, excuse me. It makes me wonder when they got when he married this. Um, other person might have been quite late. Um, because no marriage certificate, although Ancestry doesn't give you everything, so you do need to go and search. Um, so what I'm going to do is do that. Search. Come on, internet. So you can see here, William James, William James. Now he married in 34 and then by his death, he was supposedly married to this other person. So let's just go and have a look. Oh, I just saw it and then I missed it. 34, 36, 1980. Bentley, 77 Bentley, 72 Bentley, 
67 Bentley. Let's kind of have a look at this one. So 68 um, in Newmarket, but the other one was 67 in Bentley. So they kind of cross over us, which makes me think that they're two separate people now. Uh, what I'm looking for, Dine and DY. Over here. 46 Eastwood Street Driver. Okay, and it's a new market, so that's not him. Um, well, in saying that, it could be, but it doesn't match up with what we've got, so I'm going to leave it for now. Right, let's have a look at 72 Bentley. Eleanor Mavis again, so 72. So what I'm trying to actually do is just try and see where if uh, William James married to Mary Hogan, was it? Don't say it now. Um, Mary Hogan lived at the same address that William James um William James Bentley, 77, 72, 67. Let's have a look at that one. I was wondering if I already looked at this one. I do this sometimes. I've got the same ones more than once. That's why you should uh, have a research strategy. <laughs> um, but I'm not doing anything by the book today. So here he is, 14 Bethel Street, a clerk, which matches up with what he did. Um, but no one else living with him. No one of the same surname anyway. So that's 67. Let's go to the next page. Sixty-three in Bentley. So again, if you're just joining, these are the Australian electoral rolls. Um, available from 1840 up to 1980, although it does say 1903 up there. All right, Mary Therese, Mary Therese, 14 Bethel Street. All right, this is, we're getting somewhere now. So I'm just going to pull up a little sticky note. Um, uh, what are we doing here? Actually. Okay, so William and Mary Therese. Good if I could spell. Therese at 14 Bethel Street, 1963. Okay, I'm going to save that one. Now, from memory, it was the one just before, it was the one just after, that he was with nobody. 63, so 60 years old. In 63, I want to go to the next one. Yeah. Come on. So 63... 60, William James, not James William, William James, 67. All right, so William James alone, a clerk, 14 Bethel as well. Okay, so now this is kind of showing us, oh, oh. William 
All right, so I want to look for the next one. So 67, next one will be 68. And if it's going to come up with this other lady, that tells me he remarried and that maybe his first wife had either left him or passed away. Here we go. Eleanor Mavis. Different address though. Still in Bentley though. William James Eleanor Mavis. Being that it's in the 60s, I wouldn't be able to find um, a marriage certificate for them. Um, but everything's kind of matching up, so I'm just going to add it and we'll see. We'll see what happens. So um, Eleanor Mavis, so I'm going to add over here uh, another spouse. Eleanor Mavis. Made a name unknown. Possible that she's still living, so we'll leave that. She might have been significantly younger than him. We don't know. Right, so he died in 80. Mary Therese Hogan. What can we find on you? Did you have any children with him? It's what we want to know. Dad, come get me. 35 in Bentley. Yeah, come get me, Mrs. Chicken. 14 Bethel. Come get me, Mrs. Chicken. 14 Lazy Sundays are the best, aren't they? William James. And So if we can't find any significant, oh, Mary Therese Hogan, Police Gazettes. Police Gazettes are always interesting. Um, usually they've either committed a crime or maybe they were a witness to a crime. Um, where are we looking? Mary Therese Hogan. There's a here, okay. Uh, described as between 50 and 55 years of age, 5 foot 8 inches high, dark complexion, clean shaven, about a, about 11 stone, large dark grey eyes, left South Australia in June of 1913, is believed to have gone to Sydney, but is said to have seen have been seen in the Port Augusta district about three years ago. He is a first class engine driver and was employed by the Glenelg line for many years. Inquiry is on behalf of the public trustee of Adelaide, who is desirous of having him located as he is a beneficiary in the estate of Mary Therese Hogan. Wow, there you go. And when was this written in 1925? So it's not the Mary Therese Hogan that we're looking for, but still an interesting story. So we can see from our Mary Therese Hogan what we've already found on her. She was living in 1935, so um, unless her mother of the same name, who knows? Let's have a look at the hints that Ancestry is giving us. Okay, so that was that, so we could ignore that now. Um, and it's giving us 
um, a public tree. Now I'm just going to pop back over to William and check out those dates. So between 63 and 67, I'm going to say she passed. Let's pop it in and see what it brings up. Now, it might be that she actually didn't pass, um, but maybe she had just left William. Just search and see what we can find. Here we go, Mary Therese Dynan. Father's name Hogan, that matches up. In 1964, so there you go. So 1963 to 1960. So you can see just by using that and using a hint, and you know we've kind of got an idea of maybe she died between these dates. That gives me information. So if I was researching her, I've now got her mother and her father's name, and I can then go from there back to find more information. Now I'm actually going to leave you guys there because I believe my family needs me. Um, and it is Sunday. We're all home, so I'm going to go spend some time with them, and I will see you guys later. I will let you guys know. I might do some more of this a bit later, um, and I'll let you guys know how it all goes. All right, we'll catch us later.